When is the last time you created just for you? Not for more followers, likes, shares, not for that audition, not for more listeners, not for status, just for you. This episode explores why art is a powerful tool for connection, vulnerability and resistance in a world that feels increasingly disconnected. I want to talk to you about what is so important about being an artist at this time in history. Hey, I'm Lara, an artist, educator and entrepreneur who's danced through life in Australia, London and California. Now I'm an Aussie in Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Juggling roles as an artist, ex-dancer, current actor, author, professional educator and qualified life coach, I'm also a wife and mother of two. Join me on this podcast crafted for creative souls at every level, entrepreneurs, artists, dreamers, and hope-filled humans alike. I'm here to guide you towards a life of love, purpose, adventure, and boundless creativity. As a healthy, wealthy, and wise creative soul, I invite you to hit subscribe for weekly inspiration. Anticipate solo episodes, exclusive interviews with creative luminaries, and insightful discussions with my hottie hubby, Andrew, a specialist performer's physical therapist, as we delve into the dynamics of relationships and more. Dive into a 360-degree view of making a creative life you'll love. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Healthy Wealthy Wise Artist Podcast, where we explore what it truly means to live as an artist and a creative in today's world. I'm Lara, your host, and I'm a life and creativity coach and a writer and an actor and a lot of things used to be a dancer and choreograph and direct a lot more and produce. So I've worn a lot of different hats if you're new to the podcast. And I want to address something with you today that I know many have wondered. Why does your art still matter in such a chaotic world? Like when we were in the middle of COVID, why does it matter? Now in the middle of whatever's going on in the economy, why does it matter? Is it important? I remember a friend of mine going to Africa and working in um, the third world country that it is in certain sections uh, more than others. And she came back and went, why does it matter that I'm an actress? And that's while I was living in London. And it just raised some really deep questions for her. So in this episode, I'm going to shed some light and some beauty and some answers onto those things. But I know with so much noise out there, it's easy to feel like your voice just gets lost as an artist. But here's the thing, your art matters now more than ever. And today I'm going to explain why. So stick around. This episode might just reignite that creative spark you've been looking for. So let's begin by grounding ourselves in the idea that art has always been central to shaping culture. Wherever you're listening, whatever the main culture is for you uh, around the world, whether it's a painting that shifts political conversations or a film that questions societal norms or even a novel that changes our understanding of humanity, art is how we move the needle. And I know, and I've said it before in this podcast, that Uh, government organizations have paid particular producers or artists when they're trying to get a, a, a particular political thing moved they often will turn to art because it somehow if you're watching television softens us to new ways of thinking and being more open to things that maybe we weren't before so always remember that the stories you tell hold a lot of power So have you ever thought about your art as more than just a personal outlet? Have you considered that your work is part of a much larger dialogue that shapes how we see ourselves and each other? I'd love to hear how your art has shifted the conversation. Send me a DM on Instagram at Lara Bianca Pilcher. So just in summarizing that last point, right here, visualize your art not just as creation, but as the power to move culture it can even be a cultural movement and that's something that just adds so much value and it's absolutely true all right number two vulnerability let's talk about it creating is at its core an act of courage you are showing parts of yourself that you might otherwise keep hidden through your art sometimes but 
It's exactly that vulnerability that makes your art powerful. It's what creates the real connection with others. I remember standing in a theatre in London. It was the end of Act One and I had this vulnerable moment of tears where in the story, uh, the musical, I am about to leave my husband. It is so vulnerable and so raw and I remember leaving the audience in that vulnerable uh, vulnerable place, but it was a shared vulnerability with me in that moment on stage. So whether you're playing a character or you're actually painting something that's vulnerable and meaningful, there is such power and beauty in that shared experience. So pause here for a second and think about the last time that you shared a piece of work you weren't fully confident about. What was the reaction? Did someone connect with it in a way that you didn't expect? That's the power of vulnerability. So send me a message or share your story with me. Again, I want to hear from you guys about how your creative journey has been impacted by stepping out of your comfort zone, because that's something we are always doing together. What about art as resistance and resilience, like pushing back against the noise? Because every time you sit down to create, you are resisting the noise in your head and in culture that tells us that art doesn't matter, that productivity is only a measure of success. Now, that is so strong where I live in America. It's like art is this thing that is low priority that you get to in a lot of circles as a cultural message overall. Obviously, not when you're sitting there in a theatre making art (laughs) or wherever it is, but It is so, so important. It's actually more foundational in our lives than we realize. And Brene Brown's done beautiful work on creativity and how important this is as a lifeline for the rest of your life. And I'm big on that too. And around this, it's really about that creativity isn't a luxury. I see it all the time, the pressure to commercialize creativity, to create for algorithms instead of for the soul. And we've lost that, my friends. We're creating for them. We're creating for success. We're creating for algorithms. But when is the last time you just created for you? Because that passion was the foundation of why you started in the first place. And that is so important to hold on to in this busy world because that is the fuel that will keep you going. But art is also resistance. It is a stand against a world that often feels transactional. Now hear me out on that. It's a reminder that beauty, truth and humanity are worth preserving. And in doing so, art becomes an act of resilience, pushing back against a system that asks you to abandon what makes you you in order to fit in, to conform, uh, compare and despair sort of thing. And I've done an episode on that. If you want to go back, find compare and despair. But you've got to be able to give your voice into the world and know that there is a, a, a seat at the table for you to do that. I've got a beautiful friend who is going through a really hard time and she said this year for my birthday I just want to go and engage in art let this inspire you my friends and she said you're the friend I've got that's an artist and so we're going to go and walk through an art gallery this weekend together to celebrate her birthday and there's such healing in just that still contemplation in letting the voice of the artist that painted those images speak to us as we walk through speak to our soul in a noisy world to take that stillness and um, as you know I've I've done a lot of art forms from singing dancing and acting um, and to writing and visual art is not one that I actually do myself but the ability to look at a piece and have this conversation with the artist that's not even there is so powerful hold on to that my friends so think about this when was the last time you created something just for yourself without thinking of the likes, the views, the shares, or the I'm going to get signed for this, or I'm going to book this job for this, or I'm going to get this many listens for this. It's just for you. Let me know on Instagram or drop a comment wherever you're listening. I'm on Facebook, Pinterest, Threads, all the other places, LinkedIn. I'd love to know how you're pushing back against this pressure in your own creative practice. It's so easy to do, like for the actors that are listening, you know, you self-tape, you self-tape, you self-tape, you're you're creating for someone else, creating for someone else. It's no wonder that it often becomes a burden because it's not something that you're doing just for you anymore. It's like it gets stolen and hijacked from your life and that creative flow in you, you've got to hold on to in this noisy world. 
So how do you resist the noisy world you go back into? Slow, beautiful, sustainable practices of exchanging with art, listening, having a conversation and standing up and putting your own art out there, not just what the gatekeepers are saying to do. In that way, you push back. All right, let's shift gears a bit. Yes, your art is deeply personal, but it's also part of a collective healing process. Like I talked about with my friend and I, I know that she's being drawn to that because she knows it's healing. Look at the murals that popped up in the cities during times of protest or the virtual galleries that helped us process isolation during the pandemic. These aren't just artistic expressions. They're community-wide acts of resilience. So beautiful. I remember seeing um, a video during the pandemic. I was in the really long, strict lockdown in Melbourne, which was globally put on the news <laughs> for how strict and long it was. And... I remember watching this video of people in their apartments in a busy city. It wasn't New York. It was somewhere in Europe. And they were, the pianist was out on the balcony playing and people were singing and just listening and enjoying his music in the isolation of their own homes. And I thought, wow, look at that. Right now at a time like this, if I was to say, does art matter? You would all say, oh my goodness. Yes, Lara, it does. Your art, whether it's a painting, a poem, or a piece of choreography, has that same potential. You don't know whose life you're touching by creating. You don't know who needs to see your perspective to understand their own. You don't know what they're going through when you're dancing. Um, Like we've done, we've produced work through Project Dance and put it in the streets of um, Times Square, New York, and outside the Opera House in Sydney, and these really cool places. You don't know whose life you're touching by creating and putting on the stage when Somebody walks uh, past and just stops and engages. I have seen people just cry. You don't know who needs to see your perspective to understand their own. It's a reminder that your work doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's part of something much bigger. Remember that, my friends. You have so much cultural power that you may not even know. So if you've ever created something that helped others heal, or maybe you've been on the receiving end where someone's art helped you process something difficult. I remember Diane Collard, I've actually interviewed her in the past. She wrote, I choose to forgive, but her son was brutally shot dead and murdered. And her whole story of healing and why she works in art now is because of the way that abstract art as she walked through the galleries, just trying to find a place for her pain she was met with this exchange with abstract art and that has changed her life and brought healing to her. It's phenomenal, my friends. So if you've got a story like that, would you reach out to me where someone's art helped you process something difficult? Let me know. I'd love to feature some of these stories in future episodes. At its core uh, is an audacious, that means bold and brave, act of hope. It's the belief that what you create can make a difference, even in a world that sometimes feels indifferent. And at this moment of uncertainty for many, whether it's your personal struggles, industry challenges, what's happening with AI, what's happening in the arts, oh my goodness, there's so many questions or global events that hope is really needed. Artists are needed by now more than ever. And I'm not just saying we need your art in the world because um, the world just needs your art, like some entitled thing. It's the perspective of what I'm sharing with you is that you get to contribute beauty and part of the conversations or resistance or authenticity or vulnerability and exchange. You get to have a seat at the table. And when you know that you have that power, you step into that power and you create in that power and what you bring to the world is what's needed and that's how it works that beautiful exchange when you are creating in a vacuum empty of the sense that what you're doing matters just producing to to you know reach an algorithm or whatever often you lose that very beauty of what you can do and that how much art matters in the world that we live in today 
forgetting that you need it too. You need that exchange. Some of the most beautiful moments I've had are alone, just pouring out my heart and emotion in dance in a studio. It's been the most healing, most wonderful thing. And I remember a few years where I lost sight of that and it just became about performing in the West End and auditions. And I lost that whole deep passion as to what I really loved about it in the first place. Don't let that happen to you. So here's my challenge to you. The next time you sit down to create, remind yourself that your art is a declaration of hope, both to yourself and others. It's a reminder to yourself and to everyone else that beauty, truth and humanity still matter. This is a timely episode. I really feel it's important for what's going on right now for you and for the world. But if it sparks something in you this episode, share it with a friend who might need to remember why they fell into the love of art in the first place, might need to remember it's part of the foundations of a happy life, not the sideshow. If you want to dive deeper into these conversations, visit my website, lauraatbiancapilcher.com. Subscribe to this podcast, get on my socials everywhere that socials are and drop me a DM. Let's keep this dialogue alive because the world really, really needs to hear from people who have this um, revelation of what their art can do. Okay, friends, remember, if you need some extra one-on-one help, I am a professional life and creativity coach. Um, It took me a year to get that formal qualification in there with my 25 years in the industry and my qualifications professionally as an educator in the arts for 20 years as well. I have lots to offer you if that's something that you really need or you know a friend needs. It's a great um, gift as well. You can always do that for somebody who might need a session. Um, And remember this, friends, I'm with you on the journey. And until next time. Phew, today's masterclass is done. I love reaching back and saying I've done this and helping you learn the easy way. If you want more, head to larabiancapilcher.com for show notes, links, freebies, my blog, coaching and courses. And you can also head to my socials, Lara Bianca Pilcher on Instagram and Facebook. I'm also on Twitter and Pinterest. Thanks again for listening. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That would mean the world to me. And of course, keep on living the healthy, wealthy, wise artist living towards your dream life. Bye, friends. P.S. Shout out to my hottie hubby, Andrew Pilcher, who does all the editing on this podcast. <laughs>